Hello, Eagles fans. I'm Chris McPherson here with NFL Network's draft analyst extraordinaire, Mike Mayock, and of course, the analyst for the preseason telecast for the Super Bowl champion, Philadelphia Eagles. And Mike. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Does, Super Bowl champion? As a, Mike, as a native Philadelphian, yeah. how proud are you that that weight is lifted off the city's back, that everyone can be kind of proud and walk around with their heads held high? that they're Super Bowl champions. You know, I grew up in West Philadelphia. My dad was the offensive line coach at University of Penn, the old Franklin Field. So when I was a kid, eight, 10 years old, I would go in with my dad when he went to watch film on a Sunday, the day after their games. And I could look right out his window from Waitman Hall on the Franklin Field. And the Eagles were playing at Franklin Field in those days. So, I mean, I grew up watching the Eagles and the last championship was 1960. And I can't tell you, A, how cool I thought it was watching the game and, and the feeling you get, the way the team came together, and then B, just kind of being, thinking back to 1960 was the last championship, and that parade was amazing, and Jason Kelsey's speech was outstanding. I think, I think it touched every Philadelphian that saw it. Mike, you were around the team a lot during the training camp and preseason. Did you get a sense then from being around Doug Peterson, from being around Howie Roseman, that this could be a special team? Well, I, I, first of all, I think Howie Roseman and his personnel staff did a Hall of Fame job over the last two years. And what they did to bring this team together, draft, free agency, trades, they used everything available to them to bring this team together. Um, and I think what Doug Peterson did uh, from a coaching and teaching perspective was highlighted what happened with the quarterback situation. Wentz goes down, you go to Foles, you highlight what Foles does the best. And I, I think it's the, the ultimate when you start talking about player personnel development, player personnel drafting, and what Howie and Doug did. Uh, I, I think back in preseason, and I thought, okay, this team plays well. It can be a playoff team if it plays really well. But Super Bowl, Super Bowl champions, I'm not sure anybody had that. <laughs> Mike, you talk about the quarterback situation, Carson Wentz, Nick Foles. Obviously, quarterback is a sexy position here at the yeah. NFL Scouting Combine, yeah. the NFL Draft. There could be five or six who go in the first round. Yeah. But how fortunate are the Eagles that they have – the quarterback position already said that they have their franchise guy in tow and that they don't have to worry about that going into this? Pick a number. How many franchise quarterbacks are there really? I mean, most coaches I talk to say there might be 8, 10, 12 maximum franchise quarterbacks in the entire league. So that to have one of them, and especially to have a young ascending talent, uh, what you can do now is build around him for the future. And I think Howie's done a great job. Joe Douglas, um, they're going to have, you know, what they, I, I think the Nick Sud, uh, the uh, Nate Sudfeld thing is really intriguing because obviously you've got the backup quarterback Foles on a one-year deal. So how strongly do they feel about Sudfeld and do they need to drop a later draft pick on another young quarterback or not? And I think that'll be interesting. You mentioned building around the quarterback yeah. position. It's, it was interesting that Doug Pearson here at the Combine said that he wants to improve special teams. And I think about about speed, adding speed to the return game and maybe the receiver position. Are there some guys there and maybe end of first round, maybe day three, because right now the Eagles don't have a day two yeah, pick, yeah, who yeah. could fit the mold there for the Eagles? Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about the end of the first round, a, a guy that's been ascending since the senior bowls, D, DJ Chark, uh, the wide receiver from LSU. He ran 4-3-4 today. He does have some background punt returns. Um, he's a guy that could definitely help in the return game and I think uh, could be a wide receiver of the future. I think he's really interesting. You start talking about, you know, the third day, you know, the fourth round. Is Dante Pettis still there? He was one of the best punt returners in the history of the game. I'm not sure, but uh, he, he, a lot of people have him slated for kind of mid-third round, but you never know. And Howie's always done a great job of trading up. So there are a couple names that could make some sense. To protect the quarterback, the Eagles had three outstanding tackles, Jason Pierce, Lane Johnson, and yeah. Big V stepping in yeah. there. Yeah. It seems like they want to continue investing in the O-line, but sure. especially the end of the first round, will there be a guy at the tackle position potentially that the Eagles could look at? Because it seemed like Mike McGlinchey's name was thrown out there, but after his combine time and his workout and his interviews, it seemed like he won't be there for the Eagles there at 32. Well, he, you know, I mean, his combine workout wasn't great because he pulled his hamstring again, so he didn't really get to finish it. I, I think you'll, a guy, the three first-round potential tackles are, are probably McGlinchey, Orlando Brown, who had a really bad, you know, 14 reps or, and didn't run well. A lot of people think he's sliding. Orlando Brown, and, and he's only going to appeal to certain teams. And I don't think the Eagles, it, I don't think the Eagles, who are a zone-based run team for the most part, or, or I don't think he fits what they do as much. 
so you're talking is Martinez Rankin was is kind of a late first to late second round pick. How about Martinez Rankin? How do you feel about him? And if not, there's still some some fourth and fifth round tackles. And let's face it, you know, Big V's a fifth round guy. And uh, I hope and I hope the Eagles do continue to invest in their offensive line. Last position I want to ask you about, Mike, safety position. Mm -hmm. The Eagles are set there with the starters with Malcolm Jenkins or Rodney McLeod, but they don't really have that young guy in the mix right. to develop and bring along. Right. Who are some guys maybe again? Looking at day three, because right now the Eagles don't have that day two pick, who might be in play there for Philadelphia? Yeah, I, I think there's a kid that I'm kind of intrigued at at, at Wake Forest, and I want to look down just so I don't mess anything up after eight hours. But, you know, Jesse Bates is his name, and, and there aren't many people talk about him, okay? And Jesse Bates, to me, reminds me of, um, I don't know, the, the kid from uh, New Orleans that didn't make the tackle, Marcus mm -hmm. Williams from Utah last year, went late in the second round. But Jesse Bates is a little bit off the radar screen. He's a, he's a smaller range, can tackle, can drop down and cover a slot. I think he's really an intriguing guy. Now, whether he's going to be there in the fourth round or not is a major question. I think if you go beyond that, then you start talking about guys like Kaiser White from West Virginia, Saran Neal, who I think is an interesting guy from Jacksonville State on day three, who's got corner nickel and safety experience. And the Eagles love that kind of versatility. Absolutely love the old school black and white notebook. This, this is our lady of Lourdes in West Philadelphia. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Mike Mayock, esteemed NFL Network draft analyst, and of course, the analyst for the Eagles preseason games. I'm Chris McPherson, and thank you very much for joining us here on PhiladelphiaEagles.com.